Welcome to this quick start video for the Monolithic System Components Library for Keysight Technologies Pathwave System Design. I'm Christy Martino, a Sales and Applications Engineer at Monolithics. In this quick start video, we'll go over several topics. First, we'll give a brief overview of Keysight Pathwave System Design, also known as System View. We'll then discuss the Monolithic System Components Library for System View. After that, some basic demonstrations will be presented. We'll also show you how to access model data sheets and we'll point you to some example projects. Finally, we'll wrap up by discussing the different Monolithic library options. Let's briefly discuss Keysight System View design software. System View is a powerful tool intended for the design of complex RF systems that require multi-domain simulation and modeling. With System View, designers have a tool that's much more advanced than traditional spreadsheets and other programs. System View also includes real-world part libraries, including libraries for radar, electronic warfare, SATCOM, phased arrays, 5G NR, and Wi-Fi 6. On top of that, the Monolithics System Components Library is now available for System View. The Monolithics System Components Library contains models for components like amplifiers, filters, attenuators, couplers, and diplexers. Note that for amplifiers, the library includes both nonlinear models as well as S parameter models. The System Components Library includes models from a wide range of vendors, including mini circuits, IMS, Kyocera AVX, Gorilla RF, and many others. Designers can use System View combined with the Monolithic System Components Library to perform accurate system level simulations. Let's now demonstrate how to use the Monolithic System Components Library within System View. We'll explain the basics like how models are organized in the part selector. We'll then demonstrate how to perform system analysis using the system components library models. For this demo, we'll assume that the system components library is already installed and the license is properly configured. If you need assistance setting up your monolithics license, you can watch our licensing video. So here we have a blank schematic within a new system view project. The Monolithics models should automatically open in the part selector after installing the library. Now in the part selector, you can see the models organized by both the vendor and part type. For example, let's take a look at the Monolithics mini circuits library. Here we see models for various mini circuits components, including amplifiers, attenuators, filters, power splitters, and transformers. You can also search for models by part type. Let's select the amplifiers library, and here you'll see models from vendors like Gorilla RF, Corvo, and of course Mini Circuits. Now, as an example, let's select the nonlinear model for the Mini Circuits GVA84 Plus wideband amplifier. Let's double click the model, and now you can see this model mode parameter. Take note of this parameter for this model. Here we want to set it to 2, which is the setting for system analysis. Let's also go into the IMS library and select the model for the A0603C attenuator series. We'll set the attenuation to 3 dB, and we'll go ahead and place that at the input of the amplifier. Let's just copy and paste this, and then we'll place that at the output of the amplifier. So we have a very simple RF chain that consists of a 3 dB attenuator, followed by an amplifier, and then another 3 dB attenuator. Let's also add a multi-source element to this schematic. We'll just add a single source, and we'll make this a CW signal with a frequency of 1 GHz and a power level of minus 20 dBm. Of course, we also need to add an output port. 
Next, we want to add an RF system analysis. Notice that our source is shown here. Now let's right click on the node at the output and select add new graph and then select new power plot at node 2. This will allow us to see the output power spectrum. Let's simulate this and take a look at the results. This is the output power spectrum. You can see the fundamental, second harmonic and third harmonic. Let's also demonstrate an RF budget analysis. For example, let's say we want to look at cascaded gain and noise figure. For this we'll need to open up the system simulation properties and then select paths. Let's click add and you'll see that system view already added the start and stop points for the path. In this case, we don't need to change anything because the path has been set up correctly. That is, the path starts at the multi-source and then ends at the output port, port 2. And since we're only doing a one-tone analysis, we don't need to define the channel frequency, so we can just leave that blank. Before we simulate, let's go back to the amplifier model. This time, we'll want to set the model mode parameter to zero, which is the setting for small signal S parameter and noise simulations. Now we can simulate, and now notice this new data folder. Here we'll find a new data set with all the budget calculations that system view has automatically executed. Let's search for cascaded gain. We'll right click that, and then select add to graph, and select new graph. Now we have a graph that shows the cascaded gain of our RF chain. Let's do the same thing for the cascaded noise figure. We'll add a new graph, and now you can see the cascaded noise figure of the RF chain. Let's demonstrate one more simulation. We'll set the amplifier model back to system analysis mode. Let's go back into the system simulation parameters and let's edit the path we created earlier. This time, let's set the path type to quick sweep and we'll set the sweep type to compression curve. This will allow us to plot the output power versus input power. We'll specify the start and stop input power levels, and we'll set the frequency to 4 GHz. Notice that Add Power Measurements is selected at the bottom. Now we'll go ahead and simulate this. And now when we right click on the output node, we have an option to create a graph for the compression curve. And here's our graph. Let's now turn our attention to the example projects. The example projects are located in the C Modelithics Examples for Keysight System View folder. Let's open the project called XP Amplifier Modes. This example demonstrates the three different model modes included within an X parameter amplifier model. Model mode 0, which we saw earlier, is used for S parameter and small signal linear simulations. Model mode 1 is used for large signal analysis. Finally, model mode 2, which we also saw earlier, is used for nonlinear system analysis. In this example, a power sweep is performed to display the forward transmission gain and output power spectrum up to the third harmonic. Let's also discuss the model data sheets. Every Modelithics model comes with its own data sheet, which can be accessed by clicking the Reference Info button. This is the data sheet for the model for the Mini Circuits GVA84 Plus amplifier that we looked at earlier. At the top, we have this Model Features box that lists the validated frequency ranges and provides other information. Scroll down and you'll find S parameter, noise, and X parameter data plots. And lastly, let's go over the different Modelithics library options. Modelithics Premier product is the complete library, which consists of Modelithics full collection of simulation models. The CLR library 
contains Modolithic's large collection of capacitor, inductor, and resistor models. There's also the millimeter wave and 5G library. Every model in this library is validated to at least 30 gigahertz. Another option is a single vendor sublibrary. A single vendor sublibrary contains all the models that Modolithics offers for one specific vendor. Continuing further, Modolithics standard trial library is the exemplar library, which is a representative subset of the complete library. The exemplar library also allows you to run all the example projects. And finally, the Select Plus library is a free, smaller subset of models that can be downloaded from the Modolithics website. Now, for even more information, we recommend that you check out the article titled Highly Accurate RF System Modeling for Wi Fi and Cellular Interference Analysis. This article dives further into using the Modolithics models within System View. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, you can visit www.modolithics.com or you can email sales at modolithics.com.